How much does a windscreen change your sound? We'll find out coming up next. Thanks for watching. It'd be really awesome if you hit the like button, consider subscribing, and please share these videos everywhere you can. Links below to dcsoundup.com and the Patreon crew. When I was shopping for the RE320, I wanted to see what people were saying about them in reviews and on forums just to see if there was anything I hadn't come across using them myself over the years. Having used a mic a few times isn't the same thing as living with one on a specific source. So I was paying extra attention to people talking about using this mic specifically for dialogue. One thing that I ran into enough times to want to explore a bit more was a number of folks rightly saying that you would probably want the windscreen with the RE20, the RE27, and the RE320 for dialogue use. I honestly still don't know how Tom York screams into an RE20 without the plosives eating him up, but he does get away with it. What struck me though reading reviews of the windscreen next was the handful of people who are really put off by the windscreen changing the characteristics of the microphone so much. It looks like there must be some truth to this because there's a bunch of people saying the same thing, right? But then you weigh that against the negative reviews that the windscreen gets because people say it doesn't fit on the mic, which is absolutely ridiculous and you start to wonder what's going on. Add in the fact that if you go to the more professional sites where more experienced users are buying these mics and these windscreens, you can't find a single negative review about the windscreen affecting the tone that much. So what's the deal? What's the deal with those guys down in the pit? They're musicians. Do folks leaving these bad reviews have a real issue? Or is this just typical windscreen behavior that more experienced buyers are expecting from anything you put between a source and a microphone? More importantly, perhaps, is answering just how much of a change we can hear, and is it beyond the scope of a little bit of EQ to remedy? Let's find out. I'm going to do a brief sentence reading the same thing three times, once for no windscreen, once for the factory WSPL2 windscreen that I have here, and once for this $13 Movo WS1 that I've been using while I was waiting for the factory windscreen to arrive. Assuming you won't be able to hear the difference, though, uh, through YouTube, the WAV files will be available at dcsoundup.com, so you can download and listen yourself, and then we'll go and do some slightly more meaningful tests so we can take a look and see what's really happening. This is the WSPL2 from ElectroVoice. I'll never be able to deliver this sentence the same way three times, but if I didn't do a speaking test, this video would be far too short. And that's the proper way to take that off, by the way. Give it a little twist as you take it off and put it on, and you won't rip it up. Somebody complained and gave it a negative review about uh, the fact that you would destroy this if you had to put it on and off a bunch of times. Just do it right. A little bit of a twist. Okay, so this is the Movo windscreen, the Movo WS1. I'll never be able to deliver this sentence the same way three times, but if I didn't do a speaking test, this video would be far too short. And then this is just the mic straight up. I'll never be able to deliver this sentence the same way three times, but if I didn't do a speaking test, this video would be far too short. All right, so let's take a look at the different measurements we did. We swept using Room EQ Wizard. So what we're looking at here are the nine measurements that I took, and we can see the first three are with the big foam windscreen from ElectroVoice. You can see with foam one, with foam two, with foam three, and then the next three are with the furry MV1 from uh, Movo. And I did three of those. And in between each measurement, I just kind of reset the microphone so that all three would be a little bit different. And that kind of should average out, give us an average uh, for the imperfections here between my measurements, resetting the mic with the different windscreens. But they're all as close as I could get back to the original position. And then these last three are with no windscreen at all. So let's take a look at the overlays here. And what we've got turned on right now is just the microphone straight up. So you can see they kind of, a couple of variations, but for the most part, pretty consistent measurements. And I've zoomed in a good bit here. So this doesn't look too far off what this microphone is uh, supposed to look like. Obviously, I don't have a real measurement set up here. So. so let's turn on the 
furry, the Movo, the cheap windscreen and see how we did. I'll add those three and you can see quite a significant loss in uh, specifically 3K up to the 10K, significant difference there uh, in response, whereas the rest of the measurement, pretty consistent. So now we're just looking at the microphone straight up and with the ElectroVoice foam windscreen here. And you can see we're definitely losing a bit up here between three and nine, but not quite as drastic as the cheaper Movo windscreen at all. So quite unscientific, but you can see the difference there. Again, this top set is the microphone by itself. And then this bottom grouping here is with the foam windscreen. And then again, getting worse with the fluffy Movo windscreen that's only $13. So everybody that's saying that a $20 windscreen is too expensive, we can see there's a difference between at least these two. Now this might be because this has the the really aggressive uh, fur on it for cutting down on actual wind and not just plosives. And then it's also got this material inside. So that's to be expected that that's going to affect the top a little bit more uh, on your dialogue tracks. But those are the measurements. Thought that would be interesting to have a look at, even though this is incredibly unscientific, uh, the way these measurements have been taken. But interesting all the same to see even just the rough measurement there and the difference between the two. Let me know what you think down in the comments and if you think this is uh, acceptable or unusable or uh, how you'd go about dealing with it in a real world situation where you needed to use a windscreen to cut down on those plosives or to cut down on actual wind. I don't think a lot of people like to use the big studio windscreen so much. Oh boy, I think my screen recording just quit on me. Oh.